Hi everyone, we are going to do number seven. I already did one today on world building. And the next one, number seven, I did number six, just did. Um, number seven, I'll do in sequence. Friday, October 8, 2021, Denim, the fabric of world building. Hi everyone. In my last journal, I talked about Gaia being a nomenclatorial nod to Earth. It rotates and orbits at the same speeds, approximately the same size. So things like days, seasons, and gravity are familiar. Imagine Earth during one of its early supercontinental iterations, akin to Middle Earth. Perhaps it's a story about the traceless races that walked Rodinia. That would, of course, require a believable-ish explanation for the subsequent depletion of ozone and annihilation of complex life. Easy calamity. Or perhaps Gaia could be the post-apocalyptic reproliferation of hominids upon Earth's next colloquium of continents. Half of their breath was thrust skyward into the peakless mountain and its neighboring range. Or maybe Gaia is a different Earth-like planet far, far away. I have an answer, but that answer doesn't matter. What does matter, I think, for Gaia and every other fantasy world is that it can compete with the regular world, actual Earth, if pretend Earth stands a chance at maintaining any reader's interest. It has to overcome the temptation of reality. And reality has an advantage. It gets to seduce all of our senses. Imaginary planets can't do that. Their only resource is words, which makes them underdogs. But some maps are serious competitors, Temerant, Westeros, Hogwarts, Middle Earth, impressive, all of them, I think. There are others too, but what makes these so great to me? In part, each one feels inhabitable, not just inhabited, like fashionable jeans, you know, the kind that are carefully decorated with rips and holes. I'm a professor. After two and a half semesters of quarantine, my return to live lectures was met by a body of students who appeared to be obeying a school uniform mandate in which all legs must be partially concealed by shredded denim. I cannot begin to imagine the corporeal violence you must have endured since I last saw you. It was not the first thought that occurred to me. I just saw it as an exhibition of fashion, the kind of fashion that says, I'm boasting a false narrative about its wearer. I don't say that with any disrespect, if that's believable. I just think fashion is a matter of preference. We all have different preferences, and that diversity is the only reason fashion matters. The only reason most things matter. Consider wine. Without diverse tastes, the wine aisle at the grocery store would be an unspeakable bore, a thousand bottles all containing the same fluid. Consider literature. Preferences abound. That's what makes it so special, intimate, and worth reading. Here, I prefer to have my maps carefully sewn, even where the seams can't be seen, and definitely no knee plot holes. My empathy does not in infinitely flow. It is limited. Dispersing it is exhausting, and every drop is precious. That's why I don't like false turmoil trying to swindle me out of it. And that's why I need my fantasy worlds to feel inhabitable. But creating a genuinely lived in and living world is only half of what makes Temerant at all captivating, as I see it anyway. The other half, again, as I see it, is a different form of fashion, which can also be likened to pre-mutilated genes. But we'll end here today, and we'll talk more about denim later. With honest respect, not empathy, but respect, which is much cheaper for every inoffensive fashion. Me. Okay, uh, just a couple of comments on, on world building, and then I will leave it at that. Um, I, I think when I'm reading anything, any like, you know, fantasy world construction, anything that involves that, is plots, world, and culture. All three of those need to be the same, right? They need to at least puzzle together really effectively. And sometimes when I'm reading, I don't get that. Um, like the people, the, the, the demographics the, the, or the monsters or what, whatever inhabits a climate, sometimes it doesn't make any sense with the selective pressures 
of that habitat, right? There's no way that biology would develop in that direction, given the, you know, the criteria that environmental pressures um, or the built environment. You know, sometimes a built environment makes no sense when, when I see a culture's um, a, a philosophy and capacity. And like, well, why does this exist? Like, this doesn't make any sense with the, with the people themselves. You know, like the extended phenotype, spiders build webs, right? ants build hills or whatever. Um, people wouldn't build that. That's not that's not a phenotype that would emerge in the in the environment. The, the plots, right? The plots sometimes don't make any sense given the cultures, their values and, and priorities. Like, why would that plot come into it? And so I think the unification of these things is critical for a world to feel inhabitable, for me to want to leap into it. Because again, it's a big investment like remembering a bunch of new vocabulary and, and sort of invented spaces. Why would I go through that effort if it wasn't going to be believable all the way through? That's just my take. You can Your take can be anything. Um, okay, I'm going to end there today. Happy world building, everyone. I hope your worlds are the most wonderful, you know, like paradises that your any mind has ever imagined. <laughs>